I don't know if the hallucin hallucination is the right word for it. Like at that point, it's survival mode. <laughs> and I looked at it later, there was a face of a boy. Oh my god! <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to another mukbang. Today I am back with more ramen. Today I'm going to cook this uh, non fried noodle kalguksu by Nongshim. Ta da! I'm going to add some oysters and are you ready? I'm gonna add some seaweed. Also, I have homemade kachari. Kajari is kind of like, um, like a fast kimchi. <laughs> uh, I did really want to share this recipe today, but the recipe that I followed added like one too many sugar. So I am thinking about uh, making it again and then I'll share it. I mean, I should have known because I looked at the recipe and it's just like, oh my god, there's a lot of sugar. I was like a little doubtful, but I'm like, oh, but it's like a public recipe. It must be good. So I tried it. I'm like, okay, this is like, I don't know if it's just me or it's how it's like really supposed to taste like, but it's a little too sweet for me, right? So I looked at the review for the recipe and, and someone was like, oh, I think there's a little too much sugar. See, I wasn't the only one. Ame is next to me today. I'm not sure if he's gonna join my video, but... <laughs> wow, the garnishing is pretty intense. That's a lot. Okay, then I'm gonna actually add my seaweed now. I think... Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna add all of it. They taste really good. And... and very, very healthy for ya. <laughs> um, so it was my mom's birthday a few days ago. And both my dad... Like, I got all the cake and, like, sushi that my mom wanted. Like, I got all of that, right? But then both my dad and I forgot to make the seaweed soup. You know, that's, like, a traditional thing for Koreans. And both of us forgot... And I'm like, Dad, this is your job. <laughs> He's like, no, this is your job. Whatever. But both of us like bickering. This is not your fault, whatever. So like my mom was out for a little bit. So both of us are like, what do we do? What do we do? Since we're eating sushi, let's make ramen on the side and we'll add the seaweed. And I think I've done it before. And I actually really like it. Especially I add like seaweed and tofu. It tastes really good, right? But it was my dad's first time trying it. He really, really liked it. I mean, him and I have a pretty similar taste. So, I'm, I knew he was going to like it. Okay, maybe it's too much. It's alright. I'm going to just take some out. I think it's too much. I can always add more later if I want more. Let me just... Okay, it's like becoming like a meal gook. The seaweed does add flavor, so if you guys don't want that, I will leave it up and just stick to oyster. And the oyster. So these fro I know these oysters are frozen, but they are still okay to eat as raw. So I almost thought about like adding them into this kimchi, which I will next time, but this kimchi is way too sweet for me anyways. But this is kind of it. I'm gonna let it just sit and boil a little longer. Please drink. I have my bubbly. good but I think I could have added only a half amount it would have been perfect mm. okay. 
Oh, these noodles are nice and thick. Also, you guys are gonna hear a little bit of fan because Mr. Ahmed is next to me and I think he's there because the fan is there and I want him to stay so I'm sorry for extra noise. Oh boy, this is so good. Wait, this is like not bad um but still i think i all like i made it because like so that my parents could have it too but there's no way they're gonna eat this it's way too sweet for them some oyster in here. Mm. <sighs> okay, I'm not gonna lie, this kimchi is pretty good. <laughs> I think this part of the like the dry topping for this lamyan was clams too. Wow, this is actually pretty good. I don't know if I had this before. I swear I did. Okay, be careful. I think at this point, I really like lamen with oysters now more than spam. I feel like spam is just too salty, but this combination, especially, wow, I could eat this every day. I think that's because I really like seafood, 
so if you're not a huge oyster person this might not be for you Oh, that's a workout. How many of you guys experienced the, the sleep paralysis, sleeping paralysis? Basically what it is, is that you when you're sleeping, your body's still asleep, but your mind is awake. So you start to like, I don't know if the hallucin hallucination is the right word for it, but um, you experience very vivid things. Like you see things, you feel things, but you just can't move. As far as my experiences go, that's how I could describe it. Wouldn't it be nice if those experiences are like happy experiences? But for me, every time it's been a scary one. I wish like I saw like Mickey Mouse's or like Pikachu or something, but no, I saw some like some like scary things. Really creepy, uh, not normal. <laughs> So like one of the experiences when I followed my mom to her work a long time ago when, like it, this is her first job ever since we immigrated to America and it was kind of far away from our house she always had to take the train and I, I don't know why I decided to follow her so I went she was working by herself I think we went there a little too early so we had like an hour to kill so my mom and I decided to take a nap inside the store I remember so vividly that I woke up this is my head, my body, and my feet, right? I was laying down and somebody was looking down at me like that. And like they were smiling. And they're clearly, it's a its a Korean ghost still. So it has to be something in my head, right? Because cause if it was like real, I guess, why would it only always be a Korean ghost? A lady ghost in her like a white pajama. I was scared, obviously. This is when I was like in junior high or something and I w was so scared like I didn't cry anything so maybe it wasn't that bad but uh I tried to move I'm like oh my god what do I do what do I do and then like I like struggled and I would just kind of move try to fight it and I finally woke up and obviously my mom was just sleeping there and just dark and nothing was there I haven't experienced those recently because I think I know how to like 
kind of catch myself like there are moments where i try to like fall asleep and i'm like oh i feel like my body is struggling a little bit and if i wake up i feel like i'm gonna see something i don't know why it might be just like i'm i might be just overthinking it but whenever i feel like that i try so hard to like move my body and not open my eyes i'm like trying my hardest to get up and i do like at that point it's survival mode <laughs> but i heard those happen uh when you're extremely tired so i heard um that a lot of college students experience it another experience it's not sleeping par paralysis but i remember visiting one of my old old school friend she invited me over to her house and this is when i had like a flip phone or i think it was a slide phone it was a samsung slide phone with the camera turned i remember taking like a photo like i was laying on her either her bed or some kind of like a sitting area i laid down i took a picture and i looked at it later there was a face of a boy oh my god so there was like a blue tint of like blue boy's face and oh my god it's, it's pretty creepy <laughs> that's so creepy okay, anyway i saw it but back then i think i wasn't that scared because i was with people and I showed it to my friend, like, the who invited me over. This is her, her house. I showed it to her. I was like, oh my god, do you see this? And she's like, delete it right now. Delete it. But I don't even know how to explain that photo. I mean, like, I mean, obviously I was scared, too. That's why I deleted it, and I never looked back. But that was just some creepy, yeah, really creepy experience for me.